US drug giant Pfizer's takeover bid for Britain's pharmaceutical crown jewels AstraZeneca has put the future of Britain's science base under the spotlight. It's also put under the spotlight Vince Cable, Business Secretary, and George Osborne, Chancellor. What can these two men do about this bid? Well, I'm joined by our political editor, George Parker. What's been the reaction in Whitehall to this uh, takeover bid? Well, I think the initial reaction is positive. You know, it's an advertisement for Britain as a place to do business. It's an attractive place with an attractive tax regime. So on the face of it, you know, the deal's been, or well, the prospective deal's been welcomed by ministers. But on the other hand, there's a great deal of concern because these deals quickly become very political. And that's why there's been intense contact between the ministers concerned, Vince Cable and George Osborne and the companies. And, I mean, and there's deep concern in the science community looking at the closures of the sandwich uh, facility of uh, Pfizer and also a facility in Cheshire. Deep worry there about an erosion of Britain's science base on a deal which some people have seen, see as a form of tax arbitrage, which is not really focused on the future of Britain's science industry. I think ministers want to be assured that this is a deal driven by strategic interests and strategic interests of the British pharmaceutical sector in particular. There's an industrial strategy which Vince Cable has pushed very strongly to promote high-end manufacturing, particularly in the pharmaceutical sector. And they want to be assured this has not just been driven by tax arbitrage, it's been driven by the interests of research, development and jobs in the UK. And those are the kind of assurances they've been seeking. Now the question is whether those assurances, if they get them, are going to be worth very much in the long run. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, let's just go into more detail on that. It's all very well, but really, can they get any assurances? I mean, you know, as you say, we've got our door open to foreign business and these kind of takeover bids. Is there anything they can really do? Well, that's the, that's the trouble. The, the powers the ministers have in this area are quite limited. Um, there's the Enterprise Act, which can be used to fend off unwanted takeovers in questions of national security, media plurality, um, financial stability. None of those apply to the pharmaceutical sector. There's also a European Commission inquiry which we think will almost certainly be triggered were this deal to go ahead because of the scale of it has cross-border implications. In that case ministers could try to apply some kind of public interest defence in Brussels, say for example it doesn't accord with European interests on research and development and jobs and so forth. But those kinds of appeals very rarely succeed in Brussels. So the truth is that in legal terms ministers have very little power on this but they do have soft power because there is an industrial strategy applying to the pharmaceutical sector. Ministers are involved, public money is involved. So though the legal instruments may not be that effective in the long run, ministers still have, still have money on their side. And uh, final question, I mean, does that soft power apply to the management of AstraZeneca? Could they put any influence over them? Leave your hands in their Swedish chairman and uh, others within the company. Well, they can do, but in the end, you know, the, the, this is a decision for the shareholders and for the directors of the companies, is it in the interests of the company? So ministers can apply pressure. But we've seen in the past, in the case of Peter Mandelson, when he was the Labour Business Secretary, he tried to throw grit in the wheels of the proposed craft takeover of Cadbury. He made a big song and dance about it. The deal went ahead anyway. He couldn't do anything to stop it. And it just shows that in the end, market forces will determine the outcome of these deals. OK, so limited options for Vince Cable, really. Well, yeah. George, um, thank you very much. And uh, to read more news and analysis about this ongoing story on the future of Britain's science base and this takeover bid, please go to ft.com.